I don't know how to start this video. <laughs> Today we're gonna make a baby nest. Ah! This is what it looks like when we're finished. Finished product, yeah! Are you ready to make one? Let's do it! Don't forget your wine. Hi, I'm Nikita, and welcome to my channel where this is what I do. I drink and I sew things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! If you're thinking, I can't make that, I don't know how to do anything, do not worry because the first one of these that I made, I was still pretty beginner. I'm still a pretty beginner. Shh, don't tell anyone. And it's just a couple of straight seams and some of the elements are can be a little bit more challenging and time consuming, but if you follow along in this tutorial, you can make this super cute thing as well. Oh, love it. This baby nest is super versatile. Use it to put your baby down after a bath. Use it as a photo prop. Use it as a dog bed. The possibilities are endless. This is really hard to hold up. <laughs> this is a baby nest I made for Tiny Squish. Um, it's got two types of Doctor Who fabric and Harry Potter fabric. The ultimate baby nest. Did you know that a dog a top costs $175? <gasps> I just couldn't do it. So I decided, hey, I have a sewing machine. I could probably make one of those myself. Plus you get to pick the fabric, make it super cute. This part comes out, thankfully, because um, she actually peed on this before I started modeling it. Just put that over there. <laughs> and it's completely washable. So when you put it through the washing machine, sometimes this part the inside will bunch up, but it has Velcro right here. So you can reach inside and you can fix it and make it look nice again. Put it through the washer, you can put it through the dryer. I'm a firm believer that anything that you own for a baby should either be able to go into the dishwasher or the washing machine. True story. Today I'm drinking another Pinot Noir. It's my favorite kind of wine. This is more my speed, $12 a bottle. Oh yeah, listen to the birds sing. This is Eola Hills. We actually live pretty close to the tasting room and it's amazing. You can get it in the grocery store and stuff. Actually, since it's an Oregon wine, I don't know if you can get it anywhere. Not Oregon. I don't know, if you don't live in Oregon, somebody tell me. Can you get Eola Hills in your grocery store? Also, I'm drinking out of a mason jar wine glass because I'm, as we know, extra fancy. <laughs> So without further ado, let's do it. That's probably super cheesy. For this project, you're going to need three yards of cord, one cord stopper, one package of extra wide double fold bias binding, some Velcro, a tape measure, a rotary cutter or some fabric scissors, two to three yards of fabric. These two are going to be the front and back of my baby nest and this super cute one is going to be for my mattress. The mattress is optional. You're going to need some pillow stuffing, this polyfill fiber fill. You're also gonna need some batting. This is a drawing of what the pieces we will cut will look like and what the baby nest will look like before we sew it. So take a screenshot for future reference. Step one should always be to make sure that your wine is full, that you're ready to party. No, but for real. Step one, take care of yourself. Step two is going to be to cut our fabric. So from that drawing, remember, we're going to cut two pieces, one from each fabric. The pieces will be 30 inches across by 40 inches tall. Because my fabric is folded in half, I'm going to cut a piece that is 15 inches across and 40 inches tall. I'm actually going to lay my two fabrics together. I'm gonna to cut both pieces at the same time because then at least I know that they are going to be exactly the same. Guess what? It is yet another project where we get to use our magic clips. Ah! To make sure that these stay together while I'm cutting them, I'm gonna line them up and then I'm actually gonna clip the edges. If you don't have clips, then pin it together because it will make your life so much easier. 
One thing I forgot to mention is that you should prep your fabric like I have actually not done and I should probably go do. To prep your fabric, wash and dry it like you are going to the actual item. So if you use this the way I use it, which is as a changing mat for the baby, then you should probably wash it on hot and dry it on high. And just to make sure that the fabric has pre-shrunk because it would be really unfortunate if that happened the first time that you washed it and it pulled away from all of the seams. Learn that the hard way. Go ahead and cut our fabric. I should probably film while I do this just so you can see all the fun mistakes I make. I think it probably goes without saying, but I am not a professional sewer. I know it's seamstress, but what's the like, gender neutral version of seamstress? Normally I use a T-square for this. I think I mentioned this in my last video, but I still have not taken the time to go look for it. Now let's remove the clips. Now we have our two mostly identical pieces. You are going to take them, unfold them, and then refold them in half, but inside out. The reason I'm ironing it is because I had it folded and so when I folded it inside out, it's doing this weird crease thing. And I wanna make sure that I get that out. I clip them together again so that they stay put when I trace my pattern on them. This here is the folded edge. This is not. So make sure when you're tracing this, we're not on the folded edge. And from about halfway, you're just gonna make a nice rounded See, that's why we do it on the wrong side. Now, again, this is the folded edge. This is not the folded edge. From not the folded edge, I'm gonna measure up from the bottom eight inches, make a mark. I'm gonna measure over eight inches and make a mark. Now, get a straight edge. Your straight edge can be a piece of cardboard or whatever. We're gonna make a line across and we are gonna make a line down. If you're using a light colored fabric, might I suggest maybe not doing what I'm doing and <laughs> using a dark colored marker. Now that we have our block here, this is gonna be the leg of our baby nest. This is going to be that nice curved part in the middle. So we're going to start from here and we're gonna make a slight curve down. I went a slight curve down and then straight. I ended up about an inch, a little over an inch down from this edge. From this straight line here that we made, about two thirds of the way down, we're going to curve, make this nice little curved edge here, see? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna make a nice curve. We are now going to cut in four places along our fabric. The first place we're gonna cut is from the folded edge along that line you made to the corner. The second cut we're gonna make is along the curved edge up to the corner. The third cut is just to slice off this little corner. My corners are not perfect, but I'm gonna kind of fix it a little bit with my seam. If you are not confident in your corner drawing abilities, Put a bowl or a small plate or something curved along and then trace it. And then you'll get a perfect curve every single time. The fourth cut that you're going to make is along this line that you made at the top. Now that we've cut all of our pieces, let's unfold it and see what it looks like. Ta-da! And this is what your baby nest will be. Unfold both pieces and you're gonna place them right sides together. Now that your two fabrics are right sides together, we are going to pin them. Before I start pinning my fabrics, I need to make sure that I don't accidentally sew over the part I need to put my hand through to stuff the edges. So take your tape measure and start at the corner at the top of the legs. We're gonna measure down three and a half inches and you're gonna make a mark. Do that on both sides. Now that you have your two marks, pin 
all the way around until this mark. Do not sew over this part. We will do that later. Now that we have everything pinned, we're gonna sew from this mark all the way around to our second mark using a half inch seam allowance and just a regular straight stitch. So let's go sew. Refresh your drink. As my stepmom says, make the birdie sing. It's very important that you have your pins right next to your sewing machine. It is even more important that you have your wine right next to your sewing machine. Also make sure your pins aren't somewhere where you can knock them off. Pro tip, forward stitch. Make sure you back stitch. And then we're gonna top stitch all the way around. see that my seams and my fabric lining up is not exactly perfect. If it doesn't end up perfect, I just try to roll with it the best that I can. Because that's real life, am I right? <gasps> my wife, it's okay, problem solved, tragedy averted. Now let's turn it right side out. You may have to stick your hand inside a little and make sure those edges are nice. Check it out. Doesn't look much like a baby nest now, but it will soon, I promise. Now take your iron and you're gonna press the seams flat. Now keep your iron out because we have a couple more things to press. First, we're gonna take this curved edge and we're gonna fold it in a little bit. See how I fold it in basically the whole curved part? The idea here is that we're gonna end up putting our Velcro right here. So we're gonna fold the curvy part. I think at the height here, it's probably three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna fold under this part to kind of meet it. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn under this open side here. And actually, you may need to clip this up just a teeny bit. Don't worry, we will fix it. Now press it in place. Do the same on the other side. We're getting there, y'all. It's looking so good. The next step is to take your bias binding, unfold it, and we're going to tuck the edge under little bit like this so it makes a flat edge. You can press this or pin it if you want, but just you're gonna just sew straight across here to keep it straight like this to have a nice edge. Y'all, I'm gonna be straight with you. The first time I did this, I tried to cheater my way through it. I know that bias binding, double fold, can wrap all the way around. So I thought, oh, I'll just wrap it around and then I'll just sew it. Learn from my mistake, don't do that. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to do it a little bit more difficult. It requires one seam along each edge. You can't fold it because we are going to push our cord through this bias binding. So can't take any shortcuts. I am so, so sorry. We're gonna push this open with our fingers and at the curved edge of the curve, the very end of the curve, that's where we're gonna put our bias binding because when you cinch it up, you're not gonna see through here. So we don't need to put bias binding there. So you're just going to open the bias binding, place the middle piece along the seam and pin it. And you're gonna do that the whole way around.
not going to cut and tuck this under yet though because I might need to do a little bit of adjusting as I'm sewing. So I will do the cutting and tucking and sewing at the very end. Let's take it to our sewing machine. This part's a little tricky. I'm going to kind of open up. Um, this is my big open edge here. I'm going to open it up, line it underneath. The curved part is the hardest. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sew as close to the edge of the bias binding as you possibly can, being very careful to make sure that you pull your fabric out from underneath so that you don't accidentally sew this part to the bottom. We don't want that. So go slow, do some back stitching. opening here because you're not going to see it and that's not where the cord is going to be. I'm really going to leave a couple of inches here, you can see. Then we have to sew all the way back down to the other side. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to cut off the extra bias binding here. here we do not want to sew this opening closed because we have to put a cord all the way through it so we're going to sew to the end we're going to back stitch and then we're going to forward stitch again then clip your threads yes. Nikita, get it together. all right everybody welcome back i say welcome back because this is my second day sewing I have a baby, so I can't really do this thing full time. So I just kind of get a little bit of time in the evenings. Right now I am taking my uh, three yards of cord and I'm wrapping the ends with tape because it'll be a little bit easier to put it through our bias binding. So what's gonna happen is so I'm gonna take a safety pin. Don't stab yourself. Then I'm going to use the safety pin to work the cord through the bias tape all the way around to the other side. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, hungry as a bear. Oh no, I lost my sign. Where is it? Oh, it's because I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Pull that sucker through. Whoops. And we're just gonna straighten it out a bit. Now our edge is completely done and we are going to finish the inside. You're gonna need a straight edge and a fabric marker. What we're doing now is we're creating the edge that we are going to sew to make the border between our side, which will be filled with polyfill or pillow stuffing, and the middle, which will be filled with batting. So I just used my straight edge to make a line straight up from the legs to about seven inches from the top, and then I marked seven inches from the top along here, used my straight edge, to go straight up from the side. Then I used my tape measure to measure seven inches from the top around the corner here. And I just curved the edges a little bit so that they would sort of match these curves here. So these lines are about seven inches from the edge. These were originally eight inches, but because of our half inch seam allowance, they've now become seven inches. So now I have my line, I used a pin but if you want it to disappear, you can use one of those invisible fabric markers. I'll link that in the description. Or you can use my other special sewing tool, a Ticonderoga number two. I'm gonna smooth out my fabric a little bit so that there's no wrinkles here. And then I am going to pin 
right on the inside of this line. Let's take a drink. The reason that I pinned all along the inside is to hold the two layers of fabric together so that the back doesn't move when we sew this line here. Now we're going to take this to our sewing machine and we are going to do a straight stitch all along this line that you just made. We are gonna take Velcro. I am using about nine inches of a three quarter inch wide Velcro. You can use less than this if you want. I just want lots of space for me to be able to stick my hand in and fix the batting after I wash it. This folded edge here that you pressed earlier, you're going to put your Velcro on that folded edge. You're going to pin it in place on both sides, make sure it matches up, and then you're gonna sew it. Is everybody else having fun? Cause I'm having a great time. Woo, sewing. Mm. Take another drink. So now that we have our nice edge and our Velcro all sewn here, we are going to add in the batting. So get your batting out. You're also gonna want some scissors. I'm gonna place my batting just above my Velcro because I don't want it to get caught in the Velcro. I am going to cut the batting to the same size as my inside rounded piece. Here's my piece of batting. If you would like to make a removable mattress for the inside of the baby nest, like I showed you at the beginning of this video, then cut a second piece of batting just like this. Set one piece of batting aside if you're doing this step. Now it's time to put this inside our baby nest. How exciting. Open up your Velcro. I'm gonna roll the Velcro outward. We're going to fold our batting and then slide it inside, trying not to get it caught on the Velcro that we just fold it out and then straighten it out. Ta-da! Look how soft and cozy that looks. We're gonna make it look even more soft and cozy by now stuffing the inside. So let's take out our polyfill. So we have this opening right here that hopefully you can fit your hand inside. We're just gonna take a handful of the stuffing, put it inside. I would try to get it, I'm gonna get it all the way up to the top here. It's easiest, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's easiest to stuff up and then work your way down. shape it a little bit. We are going to fold these under or see how you've already made these nice little edges by uh, ironing them earlier and then you are going to close them with pins and you can hand sew them but I'm actually going to use my sewing machine. I don't know if you know this but uh, I'm out of wood. Now we are just going to pull through the cord and adjust it to how you like. Now's the time to add your cord stopper. And check that out, now you're done. What a nice little place for baby to lay down or uh, we use these as diaper changing stations. So if you are not doing the quilted mattress part, then you are done. Congratulations. Cheers to you, my friend. If you are doing the quilted mattress part, then let's put this aside take out your fabric you're gonna use and that piece of batting you just cut. If you watched my last video, you know I like to cut fabric at the same time. 
so that it all matches. So I've actually folded my fabric in half and here is the open end. I am going to cut both pieces at the same time. So I'm gonna take my piece of batting and we are leaving a half inch seam allowance around every side. So you wanna make sure that there is a half inch between the edge of your fabric and the edge of your batting. Then you're gonna cut two pieces. Or what I'm gonna do is cut one piece. Now that you have your two pieces of fabric, you are going to place them right sides together. Then you're gonna pin around these three sides, leaving the bottom open. Now that it's clipped, use a half inch seam allowance to sew all the way around these three sides and leave the bottom open. Now turn it right side out. Now place your batting inside. Now that our batting is inside, we're gonna tuck this end under. Then we're gonna pin it or clip it. If you want the seam here to be invisible, then hand stitch this using a blanket stitch or a ladder stitch. I'm going to top stitch it on my sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch as close as I can to the edge. So let's take it to our sewing machine. Now you can be done here if you want, but I am going to quilt mine. So it's sort of a faux quilting, but I'll show you the easy way to do it. Just take some painter's tape or some masking tape and you are going to make lines what we're going to do is we're just going to straight stitch right along here on the inside of each of those lines almost just died I mean, again, you could stop here, but I am going to do the exact same thing the opposite direction so it gets this really nice quilted effect. And would you look at that? Look how nice that looks. And this is completely removable and washable. So baby peas on this, not a problem. Toss that in the washing machine and you're good to go. Let's put it inside our baby nest. Oh my gosh, my threads. Why am I always forgetting my threads? you finished. Mm. This makes a great gift. It also makes a perfect thing just for you if you want to have a cute little thing around your house. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and hang around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching. I don't think we're done. That's a wrap!